Harmonizing a melody is one of the most challenging parts of music theory traditional practice. There's so many different variables and the step-by-step -step process that you need to use is pretty rigorous and if you skip some of those steps you will definitely go astray very quickly. So let's talk about our step-by-step -step process. The first thing you should do is you look at the key signature and you say okay it's either in G major or E minor. Well, which one would make the most sense? The melody starts on a B, B A G, ends on a G. So that could be G major. I mean, it ends on a G, that's a pretty, that would make a lot of sense. Um, and if it were E minor, you would, would expect maybe a D sharp in there. The fact that I see a D natural right here, that instantly tells me that we're not talking about E minor. So I determine the key signature. The next step is I want to I want to try to put my first chord as a one chord. So I ask myself, is a B in the one chord of G major? The answer is yes. So I'm just going to put the one chord in. I'm set. I'm not even going to look at any options there. I'm going to look at the last chord, and if I want to put a one chord there, so can I put? Is G in the one chord of a G major? Absolutely. So I put my one chord there. Next, I look at my penultimate chord, and I want that to be a five chord. Is A in the five chord in G major? The answer is yes. I put my five chord. I make no decisions about inversions at this juncture. I make zero inversion decisions. I need to make a good harmonic progression. And that's what I'm going to start with. So then I go back and I start working from left to right. And I look at the A, and if I have an A, it can be the root, the third, or the fifth of a triad. If it's the root, it's a two chord. If it's the third, it's a seven diminished. And I, here I can make an, in, an inversion determination right off the way, because the only one we've used so far and that you're authorized is 7 diminished 6. So 2, I know, can be in first inversion, no problem. 7 diminished can't be in root, and we don't use it in second inversion. So 7 diminished 6, and if it's the fifth, it would be a 5 chord. So here are my, my options. And again, I'm looking at the A, and I'm saying if it's the root, it's A, C, E. If it's the third, I just go down to the next diatonic note, so F sharp, A, C. If it's the fifth, I go down a third to the F sharp and down another third to the D. So that's how I'm figuring that out. All right? So here, I'll put two, seven diminished six, five. Okay? And again, I'm not looking at inversion unless I, unless I know I have zero options. I have a G. It could be the root of a one chord. It could be the third of a six chord. It could be the fifth of a four chord. Just put all those options there. I have an F sharp. It could be the root of a seven diminished triad. So I could, but I know it would have to be seven diminished six. So we only use first inversion. It could be the third of a five chord or the fifth of a three chord. The G is the same as here, so I can just recopy one, six, or four. A I've already done, so I can recopy two, seven diminished six, or five. The D I haven't done, if it's the root, it's a five chord. If it's the third, it's a three chord. And if it's the fifth, it's a one chord. C I haven't done before. If it's the root, it's a four chord. If it's the third, it's a two chord. If it's the fifth, it's a seven diminished, and I know I have to put that in first inversion. The B I've already uh, I have not done before. So it, if it's the root, it's a three chord. If it's the third, it's a one chord. If it's the fifth, it's the six chord. 
G I've already done. It's one, six, or four. So the reason that I have always urged music theory students to really get good with their scales and then very, very good with their triads is because you can see that this process of looking at every single option didn't take me that long. Obviously, it took me longer to even just say it to you and write it out. But as you're learning this, this might take a little bit longer. You want to try to speed that up. Now, I can go to my next step, which is to say, okay, now I need to refer to my chart of harmonic progressions. So, three goes to six, two, five, one. I know that five uh, can go to seven diminished, um, four can go down to two, three can leapfrog to four, four can leapfrog to five, six can be deceptive and um, five can be deceptive and go to six. That is my chart of harmonic progressions. There's another way I could write it. One can go anywhere, which is why it's very easy to write lots of one chords because you get you know it's hard to get in a place where you're in trouble. Two can go to five or seven diminished. Three can go to six or four. Four can go to two, five, seven diminished, or one. Five can go to one, seven diminished, or six. Six can go to two or four. Seven diminished goes to one. So at any juncture, I can just look here and be like, well, what are my options? So two, I can go to five or seven. Do I have either of those options in my next chord? Is there a five or a seven chord? Answer is no. So I can eliminate the two chord. That is not one of my options because of the chords I can go to. Let me jump at the bottom. Five can go to one, seven, or six. Do I have those options? Well, I have a one and a six. So five is definitely an option. What about seven to minus six? It can go to one. Okay, so either one of these is an option. Either one of these is an option. Seven will either go to one, five will go to one, or it will go to six. You notice that neither of these chords can go to four. So I'm going to erase the four because neither of these chords can go to it. So now I'm left with one or six. One can go anywhere, so I know that any of these is options, and I, so I can keep all of these. Because one can go anywhere. So here I go, well seven can go to one, five can go to one, three can go to, not one, if you go to six, it can go to four. I can keep all of these. One can go anywhere, so I can keep all of these, and I don't have to erase, I can't erase anything right off the bat here. This five chord, here's something to remember. If this is a five chord, this can't be a five chord. You, you harmonize each pitch with its own chord, and especially five chords, you don't want to go over the bar line with the same harmony. You don't, you don't go five, more five. Like this is not a typical motion. You want some kind of resolution. So two can go to five, seven diminished can go to one, five can go to one. Can any of these chords go to three? The answer is no. So we know three is not an option. I can erase that. Five can't go to four, but one, one can go to anywhere, so I keep all of these. Can, can any of these chords go to a three chord? No. I erase the three. Can any of these chords go to a one chord? Yes. Can any of these chords go to a six chord? And here I have to look closely, right? Four can't go to six. Two can't go to six. Seven can't go to six, so I can erase six as well. 
So I know this is going to be a one chord. It's, it's determined. This one's already, we got this one locked in. One can go anywhere. <coughs> this can go to five. Six can't go to five. Right? So we know we can erase that because we have to go to five. And four can go. I have now left you with the all, you know, some options. And there's more than one right answer here. You could go seven, diminish six, back to one. Now, I'm going to make some executive decisions at this point and speed along the process. Since I would love to use second inversion triads, because that's kind of the topic we've been discussing, we have B, A, G. This looks like a perfect place to go. G, A, um, we have B, A, G, I'm sorry. We have B, A, G in the soprano to basically do the voice exchange and do the opposite in the bass. G, A, B. So here, just knowing what the topic is, I can make that decision. I say, I'm going to go five, six, four in the bass, one. So I'm going to choose that and go to one. I could also just do a regular five chord, but let's kind of do what, what, this, what we've been talking about. Here, I want some variety. So this is actually one six. Um, and, and so here, I know there's certain options that even though it looks like, so I'm thinking to myself, oh, three chord, three to four. Well, that's going to be create parallel fifths. So I'm not going to choose that. That's going to be a problem. Um, how about, what if I went to five? then resolved deceptively to six, and then went to a two chord. That fits the chart, right? Five can go to six. A six chord can go to a two chord. And it gives me some, some other harm. It gives, allows me to put both a six and a two chord, something other than just one and five. Because I could go one, five, one, five, one, five, five, Four, because that one you can't do with five or five or one. So four, one, one, five, one. If I were to do super, super basic, just using one, four, five, one. This would be super easy. But we're trying to be a little more sophisticated than that. So look at, I got to put in a six chord. I got to put in a two chord. Um, now here I might back up um, because because I got myself to this two chord, which would be a five chord. But in the five chord, ah, yeah, I can just put it to the seven diminished six. I like that. Seven diminished six, there's my one, which is it there. And again, I want some variety. I haven't had a four chord yet, so let's go with the four chord. So there we go. Now let me try to do the bass line. And I, I'll consider inversions at this point. So at this point, I'm considering inversions. I put the, I, I'm not going to put... I'm going to keep this as melodic as possible. So I'm going to make it a root position 5. Goes to root position 6. Now here, I can choose. Do I want to put this 2 in root position or make or first inversion? Mm, I just had two, a bunch of chords in root position. What if I went to for, for first inversion here? Uh, and I'll, I'll make that a half note, so it works. And then five. But if I go five and then seven diminished six, that's kind of a leap. What if I went here? Well, that, I'm going to do that. I'll do that, that, and then seven diminished six. Here, I can choose one or one six. Hmm. Let me try one six. And I might change this as I do the part writing. Four, five, one. So I kind of come up with an, an initial <clears throat> set of inversions. But I'm willing to modify. So let me erase the stuff that's not in play so that it's a little clearer. Oh, 
one six state. That's our. So our chord progression is one five six four, one six, which is an appropriate use of a passing six four, to five six two five seven diminished six one six four five one, and at this juncture I would play it on the piano, just to see if my outer voices make sense and if I have any parallels or issues that I I need to address before I start parting. This is a problem that is direct octaves. Similar motion, leaping the soprano to an octave. So I'm going to need to do something different there. So I'm going to come back to that. Seven diminished six, one six, four. And here I've got another problem that I find, right? Parallel fifths. So I need to fix that. So I find any errors. So I say, okay, here we got a problem, right? This is, these are, these, right here, we got an issue. We've got parallel fists, the way we chose to write it. Here we have a direct octave. So then I go back and I try to solve those things. So I know I can't just go four or five. So I say to myself, okay, can I put one of these chords in inversion? Well, if I put the five chord and make it a five, six, then it's a C to an F sharp. That makes it, that's an augmented, Interval, it's a tritone, I don't want to do that. What if I put the four into four six, which would mean put E here, do that. Now all of a sudden I don't have parallel fifths anymore. So that solves my problem. I get a leap in the base in the base, but then I step back in the opposite direction, which is something that's very good. Here, um what can we do here? Uh, and actually, I put two six, <coughs> so I didn't indicate that. Here, if I just say, oh, I want to go, instead I want to go to put a five six here. Well, then I have that leap of a tritone. So here, I'm going to decide, you know what? I'm going to change that to just a regular two chord. And then I'm going to go to a five six chord. So two. Five six, and then I recheck my outer voices, and I go okay. And I have no problems at this point. So then I can part right. And I put the D there, I double my, my base. Now I have the, I'm gonna, no, no options, I just do the, the formula to that. And then I'm gonna go to a five chord. Uh, I maintain common tone, move to the A, complete the chord. Here there's no options, I know I need to double, double the third. Um, so, uh, that drops to the B, and that goes to the G. So I go like that. Then I move to a root position two chord. A, A, I need C and E. So uh, this is easiest to move to E here and C here. Then I have a, open it up to a five, six chord. I have D, I'd love to have a D here. Maybe, actually maybe I'll <coughs> jump in some of these other voices. I might jump up to the A here and put the D here. So I have that. Then I'm going to move to a 7 diminished 6. I, need, I know I need to double the A. That can be a common tone. I need a, a, the F sharp to complete the chord. 1, 6. I'm going to be careful here that I'm, I got two A's, and so this is going to step down from to my G. I have B, B, G, and this will jump back to my D to complete the chord. Then I go to 4, 6, common tone, E, E, this steps to complete the chord. D, A, I need a F sharp and a D, 
So that moves nice and close to the D. That moves the F sharp. And then I finish by completing the chord. Yeah. So and after I do that, I then play it again to see if I notice any errors. I go nice and slowly to listen and look. second inversion. I have a variety of chords. It all follows the harmonic progression chart. This is this works. And we, you know, we have a very good, um, very good example here, and of how you could harmonize that melody. And it's so much more interesting and colorful than if I were to just do something like. Uh, you know, no, I'm sorry. Which is one, four, and five with parallels and stuff. So I could do it as like a little pop rock song just with one, four, five, one. But instead, I've created all this other variety and colors and, and, and sounds by using more of the, the diatonic triads, by using multiple types of inversions and, and creating a really unique texture. All right, thank you. <laughs>